Hello and welcome to part two of our webinar series on aerated static pile composting. My name is Peter Moon and I am the President and Principal Engineer with O2 Compost. There are three primary benefits associated with aerated static pile composting when comparing this approach to turned windrow composting. The first benefit is the topic of this webinar, increasing site capacity by reducing the operating footprint. The second benefit with ASP composting is that it helps to resolve odor impacts and neighbor complaints. And the third benefit, which is of keen interest to most facility operators, is the reduction of operating costs during the active phase of composting. Active composting is generally considered to be the first 30 days of composting. In this webinar, we'll be taking a look at a number of topics. Uh, some examples of various windrow turners, conventional turned windrow compost systems. We'll examine the volume versus area requirements for both turned windrow and aerated static pile systems, and how consolidating windrows into extended aerated static piles will save a considerable amount of space. We'll also address a few frequently asked questions and take a look at how you can take action with an ASP pilot project at your facility. Looking at a variety of windrow turners, this is an example of a scarab straddle type windrow turner. These are self-propelled. They tend to run between $600,000 and a million dollars as initial capital investment. There are many manufacturers ranging from Bacchus, Frontier, Comtech, Scarab, Vermeer, Wildcat, and many others. In the picture shown here, it's self-propelled and produces a pile about 16 feet wide and starting height of about 7 feet. The windrow length can range upwards of 200, 300, 400 feet, depending on the site geometry. Another type of windrow turner is considerably less expensive and readily available by many different types of manufacturers. This is a tow-behind windrow turner. It's PTO driven or power takeoff driven from a farm tractor. And pile sizes typically range 10 feet wide by 5 feet high to as high as 16 feet wide and 7 feet high. And as you can see in this picture, there's a considerable amount of space required for the tractor and the windrow turner to drive between respective windrows. Looking at a few examples of turned windrow compost facilities, the photo on the left is one of our clients in New York State. This is a yard waste and leaf compost facility. And another facility on the right in California that is processing yard waste and food waste. In both of these pictures, I have superimposed a rectangle uh, with white dash lines that represents the approximate area that we can consolidate all of that turned windrow area into using the extended aerated static pile method. This is another one of our project sites. This is in Texas. It's processing biosolids and shredded wood. On the picture on the left, you see a, roughly a square area with an arrow pointing to it, which is enlarged on the right photo and measures out to be about 350 feet long by 300 feet wide and calculates out to be about two and a half acres in area. In that particular case, 350 by 300, 2.4 acres. We have windrows that measure about 16 feet wide, 6 feet high, and 300 feet long. On that site, each windrow has about 15 cub five, excuse me, 500 cubic yards per windrow, and there are 15 windrows, a total volume of about 7,500 cubic yards. From part one in this series, this is a picture of a cross-section of an extended aerated static pile. In this case, we are adding cells day by day and pipe by pipe, making the pile width wider as we go. And as you can see on top, we have added a layer of unscreened compost to serve as our thermal 
retention layer as well as our biofilter layer for odor control. Looking at that scenario, this is an example of an extended aerated static pile here at one of our sites in Snohomish, Washington. This measures about 80 feet by 140 feet and starts out about 10 feet tall, a total volume of about 3,500 cubic yards, operated by four 5 horsepower portable blowers. This pile will sit typically for 30 to 45 days before being deconstructed, screened, and transferred into curing and storage. This same site looked at it vertically you can see a number of extended aerated static piles with very little area between the respective piles for the blowers. Using this as an example and as our model and returning to our site in Texas, we take that picture and superimpose on it seven extended aerated static piles, each measuring about 80 by 135 feet. And you'll notice at the bottom there's one rectangle that is left open, and this represents the pile that is being constructed and the pile that is being deconstructed at any moment in time, resulting in seven piles that are actively composting on this site. So again, looking at the dimensions, two and a half acres, 80 feet wide, 135 feet long, and 10 feet tall. Each pile is about 3,500 cubic yards. If we have seven of these, we have a total volume of about 24, 25,000 cubic yards, thereabouts. And therefore, we've increased the capacity on that same two and a half acres by at least three times. Now if we look at that same site and consider a tow behind windrow turner, we are actively increasing the volume and capacity of that site by six to eight times. Here's another picture of that same facility with the superimposed extended aerated static piles. Now another approach is what we call our continuous flow or wedge method. This is a project that I've worked on for the past three years in Auckland, New Zealand. It was a, a pretty, pretty ugly mess to begin with, but we've converted it over into an extended aerated static pile whereby we have a single pile that migrates across the site and is aerated by a series of 11 high pressure, high volume blowers. At the leading edge on the left, we are adding material which is freshly ground and, and building that next cell and simultaneously removing material from the right side of that gap and creating additional space. In this way, the, the gap between the two piles migrates across the site and for this particular project, the pile is in place for about eight weeks, resulting in about six to six and a half cycles per year. Looking at how the pile is constructed, the green waste is shredded and delivered with a front end loader to the advancing face of the pile. At the end of the day, an excavator is used to shape that cell, to flatten the top, and then additional unscreened compost is delivered and placed on top of the raw feedstocks to serve as the thermal blanket and as the biofilter for odor control. Once that has been completed, the excavator turns around, replaces the bucket with a rake device, and excavates an equivalent area from the receding face on that pile and transfers it into curing. The material sits in curing for another six weeks to eight weeks and then is ultimately screened, in this case with a three-deck star screen which divides it into finished product, their mid fraction, which is what they call their mids and is used for the biofilter cover, and then the smallest fraction, which is their coarse overs, which is chock full of plastic and, and debris and, and is sent to the landfill. So for that project, the net benefit is an increase in site capacity 
five times. Given that we have 18,000 cubic yards in a given pile and we're going through that cycle about six and a half times per year, the result is about 12, 120,000 cubic yards per year or the equivalent of 60,000 tons per year. The area required for all this is about four acres divided into an acre and a half for active composting for the, for the aerated wedge, an acre and a half for curing, and about an acre for screening and storage. As I mentioned earlier, this project had terrific, horrendous odor problems and neighbor, neighbor complaints, and they were on the verge of being shut down. And this approach has resolved virtually all of their odor impacts off-site. And this will be a topic of our next webinar. So let's take a look at a few frequently asked questions. How do you construct the pile without damaging the pipe? What we do is we lay the pipe down, we place an aeration plenum layer over the top of it, which facilitates the movement of air across the base of the pile. And then we construct the pile from the side so that we're never running up and over the top of that pipe. What type of pipe do we like to use? Um, in some cases, we use disposable pipe, but more and more we're using thick wall, high density polyethylene pipe, where the wall thickness is approaching a half an inch. And in that case, the pipe is so durable that we can literally chain up to it and pull it out from underneath the pipe, or we can scalp the material from the top, which answers the next question, how do you recover the pipes when you're breaking down the pile? Um, quite literally, I've got videos where we are pulling the pipe out from underneath the pile, or we can scalp and manhandle the pipe off to the side, whichever we choose. How high can we make the pile before we compromise the aeration system? In most cases, depending on the feedstocks and the porosity and the bulk density and so forth, we like to make the piles no higher than 10 or at the most 12 feet including the biofilter cover layer. How do you get the cover layer on top of the raw feedstocks? This can be a bit tricky, but as we're building the pile, we will place the material on top and then rake it out, as you saw with the excavator. In some cases, we use a telehandler. In some cases, we have a very experienced front-end loader operator, which does an excellent job. So this includes this concludes uh, our second part, increasing site capacity. And if this is of interest, I would invite you to visit our third part, resolving off-site odor impacts. This is of key importance with all compost facility operators. So how do you take action? What I would suggest is start by visiting our website, o2compost.com. Learn about aerated static pile composting and see a variety of different systems ranging from very small to very large. All of the principles we talk about with ASP composting apply regardless of the volume we're working with. I then invite you to submit a contact us form which provides your information and we'll respond by scheduling a free half hour consultation with me so that you and I can discuss the particulars of your situation. If this is of interest and something you might like to pursue, I'd be happy to prepare a proposal for our aerated static pile pilot project and operator training class. I'll touch base with you if, after you've had a chance to review that, and we can decide if now is a good time to proceed with that project to start up your own ASP system at your facility. So thanks again for joining us for this second part of our webinar series. I appreciate uh, you, the time you've taken to, to spend with me to learn a little bit more about saving space and optimizing the composting operation. If you have any comments or questions, please direct them to me, Peter Moon. I can be reached through my website, www.02compost.com. Thank you.